Remember when you were young and everything in life seemed so much more fun and the possibilities seemed endless? Is that still the same for you or has life become a serious business? Wherever you are, you can change it. What if more magic, fun, and possibilities were available to you right here, right now? Join Tamara and Alan in the playground of possibilities as they play, laugh, and explore new ways you can use to make your life more fun and to create more of what you desire. Hello and welcome to Playground of Possibilities with myself, Alan Jones, actually awesome Alan Jones. I'm going to keep acknowledging that I'm marvellous and awesome and the equally gorgeous and deliciously awesome Tamara Yonker. Tamara, 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 hello. <laughs> Hi, Alan. So here we are and um, yeah, what are we talking about today? We're talking about you can't have it all. You're not allowed to have it all. Um... Is that true? Is that true, Tamara? You can't have it all? Can you have Ab it all? Absolutely, it's true. You can't, you know, there's all these limitations and they're very, very real that tell you that you can't have it all. So, no, it's definitely no. true. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, because that's, yeah, it's like, <laughs> my mother used to say that to me. You can't have it all. You can't have your cake and eat it. You can't, you know, you can have this or this, but you can't uh, have both. You can have you can have a limited options, but not infinite possibility. So that again, I didn't even hear that. I couldn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, this this reality is so good at telling us that you, it's either or, and maybe you get a third yeah. choice, and if you're really lucky, you might get a fourth choice. But those are the only options. You can't have infinite possibility. Mm. Yeah, and 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 how often do we try to avoid having too much choice? You know, that's that was amazing to me. Actually, I discovered that um, there are many people who think of choice as a burden, like having too much choice is a burden. That yeah. shocked me. I was yeah. not aware of that. I've always thought it was a great thing to have lots of choices because I I didn't feel like I had many. So when there was when I allowed myself to have lots, I was like, oh my gosh, look. I have lots of choices. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, do you know, I, I, the awareness I have around a lot of that, people thinking choice is a burden, is that often people think that once you choose it, that's it. It's locked in. You can't Forever. choose anything else. Yeah, absolutely. And once you've made your choice, that's your choice. And you can't re-choose. You can't choose anything else. So... Uh, it's like, and if I make the wrong choice, what if I make the wrong choice, if I have to ask for the wrong thing, and, and what if, yeah, all of that stuff oh, that I grew up with. Mm. Hmm, well, let's just pot and pock all that, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right, wrong, good, bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, and beyond. Oh, that feels better, because it was just like all of that no-choice universe was wearing me down. It feels like a lead weight. Yeah. Me too. It was, and so coming across access for me was that 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 first introduction to infinite choice, infinite possibilities. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was such a joy to to read. You know, in in Dane Hears book, you know, being you changing the world. You know, reading that book for the first time, just being given all of this. Actually, everything that you've ever been told about life is basically is bollocks. <laughs> and um, you know, there's all of these different possibilities out there that you can choose from, and you get to choose again. And and the the 10 second increments thing. So you choose for 10 seconds, then you choose for another 10 seconds. And I never. It took me a long time to get that that no choice really lasts longer than your willingness to choose something different in the next 10 seconds. Exactly. And I love to talk about how what if every choice you make expires in 10 seconds? So really, either you're going to keep choosing the same thing over and over and over because that, that choice just expired. Oh, and, and that one just expired too, and that one just expired too. So do you want to keep continuing to choose the same thing or would you prefer to choose something different? I think that opens up the space of possibility enormously when you look at it from that perspective like it, it that just is expired so you know what do you what do you want to choose now yeah it's like every choice has an expiration date mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like so imagine every time you make a choice you know like you go in the supermarket and they put those little expiration stickers on it you know use by yeah. you know what if you have that on every choice that you make so that you know and that mm, well, and that, that I, you know, it's interesting because people will take that the same way we we're just talking about it as choice is a burden. It's like, oh, my God, you mean I have to choose again and I have to choose again? 
And this reality would love that we all just become automatons, right? It would just love we all become automatons continuing to invest and it's uh, it's continual, you know, limitation. Like, it, it's, limitation is only as real as we make it. Mm. And if we continue to think of something like choice as a burden, then we're simply going to be like, yeah, that's too much work. I don't want to choose that often. Oh, no. And we stay in that that automaton space or, or place really of, of living rather than knowing that we can direct our lives with choice as often as we choose it, right? Like if you want to keep choosing the same thing, you are welcome to. And if it's not working for you, you are welcome to choose something different. To me, that mm-hmm. lightens things up enormously rather than this idea that choice is something that I have to do, I have to, now I have to choose. If if you like living as an automaton, if you like having to live with the decision you've made for the rest of your life, then <laughs> then by all means, knock yourself out. Have a good time with that. That does not work for me. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And I think because for me, I remember something else my mother used to say, which is kind of really related to this, is um, you made your bed, therefore you must lie on it. So, you know, and there, so I don't think people realize, as you say, that really what they're doing is they're choosing and they're choosing again and they're choosing again. They just keep choosing it because they think that what they've already done is chosen it. And therefore, they're just reminding themselves, oh, that's what I chose before, when really what they're doing is just rechoosing the same thing. Yep, exactly. Um, and and so you know that's where I I've, I've now started to learn the, the you know the the question you know what else is possible what else can I choose right now so for example I would <laughs> I you know like you were having all your um, interesting journey yesterday from uh, from I think Denver to to Boston you know I I'm saying to you I had an interesting journey into London that should this shouldn't take me long and. I did the kind of the 10 second increments and what else can I choose thing when I got off the train because I was getting myself really stressed, uh, which is unusual for me, but being in London and I'm kind of walking along the road thinking, oh my God, I'm choosing this. I'm actually choosing to feel stressed. First of all, who does it belong to? A lot of it disappeared. Then, okay, so if I'm choosing it in this 10 seconds, do you know I'm not going to make myself wrong for having um, chosen you know, to feel stressed. It was like, you know, I'm going to choose something different. What else can I choose that would actually feel lighter and more expansive for me? And the sun was shining. It was a beautiful day. And I was just about to walk across the Thames. I'm like, do you know what? I'm just going to choose to enjoy this. And if I get there late, I'm going to get there late. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just not going to choose to make it meaningful and significant about what time I get there. So Exactly. The power of choice. <sighs> yeah. And, <laughs> what, and it really wasn't a burden. Do you know, it was such a gift to to know that I didn't have to keep choosing to be stressed or or wrong or bad or stupid. It was like, yeah, you know, where we misidentified and misapplied choice as hard work rather than being an absolute utter gift and delight. I get to choose. I don't have to choose. Exactly. So I think that's the key right there. I yeah. have the gift of choice. It's not something that I have to do. Yeah. And you can you can not choose, and that's still a choice, right? It's it's, yeah. it's more indirect choice to avoid having to choose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's that's a really good point, isn't it? You know, how often do we choose something in order not to to choose something else? So, uh, I, again, related. So, um, I realised how often I was choosing not to have money, so that I didn't have to choose to go to things that I didn't want to go to. I was like totally and utterly fucked up. It's like yeah. it was an excuse not to have to do things that people invited me to. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'll do that again, Carol. <laughs> so like it, I chose, sorry, go. Oh, I was just thinking how that is such um, a beautiful example of how we did avoidance mm. rather than choice. And they and then think that, that we're choosing if we do avoidance. I mean, it yeah. is it is, again, more of an indirect choice but it's not really um, the the potency and the power, the superpower of choice to create when mm. we're using our when we're using our choice in an indirect way to avoid. Yeah, 
Absolutely. So, you know, how many other places do we choose something in order not to choose something else or to avoid something else, which is what I was doing with money. And I'm like, I'm just not doing that anymore. I'm not making myself wrong for having. And, you know, that was something that was such a gift for me that I got from the show last week with you was not making myself wrong for having made myself wrong in the past. Yes, (laughs) yes. Well, and here, here's the thing. This is what sort of inspired me, um, this topic of, you know, you can't have it all, or can you? And mm. it, it, did you, somewhere along the way, decide you can't have money? Absolutely. I can't have money because I come from a very poor... Oh, I'm not even going to justify the reason why I chose it. I don't need to. There's, there is no justification for it. I just chose it. Mm-hmm. And, and we don't, and we don't need to know those reasons and justifications. It's, it's like we put mm. so much out of reach. And, and this is what I realized over uh, the years that I've been playing with the Access tools is when I first came to Access, admittedly, I decided that my life was a giant problem and needed to be solved. And over the years, as I continue to play with the Access tools, I shifted out of that um, trying to get rid of all the reactions and get rid of everywhere I was at the effect of something and get rid of everything I didn't like and, and avoid what I was trying to avoid, suddenly I began to start creating. And that was the thing that really opened up my world. As soon as I was like, wait, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing to fix. There's no problems to solve. I don't need to actually get rid of anything. If, you're, if you've got this idea that you need to get rid of something, then you're not operating from receiving. And when you're not operating from receiving, then you, there's all kinds of things that we've put out of reach. And it wasn't until I started creating, like shifted out of reaction into creation and, and started to go, oh my God, I have put so much of what I would like my life to be like out of reach. Even if it's, you know, simply having more money than I could ever spend and never enough. Like I realized I would allow myself to create uh, enough money for what I needed but mm. not what I desired. So there was this whole, like, everywhere people, you know, were were not allowing your desire for to exceed your need of. And that's one of those things about having it all, you know. Like, if you're not willing to allow your desire for to exceed your need of any given thing, then mm. you have created a glass ceiling that you are not willing to create beyond. And and there's that's on the other side of that glass ceiling is the every the, the, the having it. You're like, no, I can't have it all, only if I need it. Yeah, absolutely. Only if it's necessary and only if it's absolutely and utterly required and only if somebody's told me that I can. But something else that you said earlier on as well, which which has been a, a re, you know, you were saying, you know, we, we, we try to, to fix our lives and all of that kind of stuff. It's like, how many things are we trying to remove from our life that were never really there? So we can't change a life. So we're trying to remove the you know all of the all of the stuff that we've bought as real but because it's a lie it never changes and so we make ourselves wrong for not having been able to change it rather than just acknowledging that actually it was never true in the first place yeah, and exactly. that you can then yeah and then you can choose something else so yeah that that i and i and it's funny because i'm i'm here in boston facilitating 5 days of classes right forest foundation level 1 and one of the things that someone in the class brought up with this whole idea of doing um, practicing during a bar session. And mm. and what came to me was, you know, are you solidifying all the, you know, rather than just allowing the bars to do what they do, right? The bars itself is an amazingly magical healing modality. And, and if I think that I need to add to it to do more, am I perhaps obstructing what's possible by trying to make the limitations real so that we have something to clear instead of just recognizing the limitations were never real in the first place and to the degree that we stop making this significant and real they can just go mm. absolutely I mean, for me when i have my bars run i just want the person who's running my bars to shut the fuck up i i really, <laughs> I, really <laughs> I don't want to be talking i want to be able to just relax and enjoy and and when people want to facilitate me it actually really irritates me i just, I just have to ask them can, can you um can you not facilitate me i'll you know if i if i require it then i'll ask for it because <sighs> it's it's just as you say the bars is a phenomenal phenomenal uh tool uh healing modality that that we will just shift stuff without you having to add to it yep so I think we're 
coming up to a break. So there was something else that was in my head, and we've also got a question in the chat room, so we can pick that up after the break, if that's all right. So whoever it is who's managing it, Carol, can you push the button, please? Were you told as a child to grow up, act your age, and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you are an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choice and possibilities are always available to you? Tune in to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on A to Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The bars is the first class in Access Consciousness, a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, U.K. 033-0001-0625, or Skype us at a to zen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello and welcome back to the Playground of Possibilities with myself, Alan Jones, and Tamara Younger. And we're talking about whether you can have it all, whether you can't have it all, and whether it's all just a load of old nonsense. So there was something in the chat room, Tamara, where Ellen is saying, I can get really confused when there are bits of things that I desire and th bits of things that I don't desire in all the choices, and then I either just pick one or I don't choose at all. Well, my first response to that is we well, you you can't not choose because not choosing is choosing. But what what would you how what would you say to that, Tamara? Well, it sounds like maybe there's um, choosing to result in that. I mean, without actually asking, uh, you know, mm. what do you mean by that? Then then, but it gives me the sense of choosing toward a particular result as opposed to choosing toward an energy. And, and when I mm. talked a little bit ago about how I shifted out of that, and I'll have to get rid of this, and I have to solve that, and there's all these things that, you know, I have to fix. When I shifted into the energy of creating my life, it was exactly that. It was energy. It's creating toward an energy as opposed to a result. And so if I was aware of an energy I wanted to create more of, say, kindness as a simplicity or gratitude, or I didn't even have to know. I mean, I remember being at a 2-3 years ago and Dane was at the front of the room giving one of his ESB tasters and you know it was a couple hours in an evening and there was an energy present when he was working with someone on the table and I became aware of that energy and I was like wow I don't know what that is but I want that mm -hmm. and so sometimes it's it's something that's so foreign to us um, that that I might just say universe I desire more of that and, and then I've made my request and my job is simply mm -hmm. to notice when that energy is delivered to me and choose whatever experience is going to allow me to have more more of that energy in my life. I mean, that's one way that, that I can create based on an energy. Uh, and I can also simply just say, you know, what energy, space, and consciousness of, of kindness or gratitude can I be right now with total ease? So there's different ways that you can create toward energy as opposed to creating toward a result. Yeah. And, and not 
that not that creating toward a result is wrong necessarily. Um, you know, a lot of people want particular things. Just know that if you're creating toward a result, there you may be bumping up against a limitation if you've decided you have to have a certain way. You may be caught up in a conditional reality when you're like, well, when I get that, then I'll be happy. It's the disease I call of if, then, when, then in this reality. Mm. And it keeps us always conditionally dependent on the external experience as opposed to I'm choosing to be happy. And that is like the pebble in the pond that goes out and, and permeates my entire reality is my, my joy, my happiness, my choice. Yeah, mm, absolutely. And I think, you know, it, it, it's a really different way of functioning when, when you're creating from following the energy and, and choosing an energy you'd like to have in your life rather than the thoughts, feelings and emotions. You're operating and functioning from perceive, no be and receive, which is not what this reality teaches us. And so, you know, as you're saying, when you're when you're choosing to follow the energy, know that whatever it is will just show up so very differently to how you ever, ever thought it would. So, you know, quite often I'll have asked for an energy or a change in my life. And what sometimes seems to be my whole world collapses around me. And I'm like, oh, and then I ask the question because, like, you know, it was one that I learned a couple of years ago, which I really loved was, you know, is this the change I asked for showing up differently? Mm -hmm. just, you know, cause, <laughs> cause, yeah it's just like and the answer i usually get is yes it is it's like wow okay so how can i take advantage of this and and what actually you know what what gift is this to me that i'm not acknowledging so i will constantly uh, just keep asking questions about what is this you know what can i do with it you know do i even you know because often we don't even need to change it it is it's such so many things are such a gift to us that we don't acknowledge that we don't necessarily acknowledge at the time Right, right. There was there was something there was a particular story that I wanted to share about um this having it all or not having it all. And it was at facilitators training several years ago again. Dane was Dane and Gary co facilitate those classes and Dane was sharing about one of his experiences where he had to catch this is when they were living in Santa Barbara and he had to catch a plane to go to Australia down at LAX. And the time when he had to leave his house in order to get to the airport on time to catch his flight was rush hour. I mean, I think in L.A., maybe it's always rush hour. But anyway, <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he he realized, he's like, he's like, oh, no, that won't work for me. Like, you know, rush hour traffic, nope, that does not do. So he described how he just, you know, used ma his magic to be able to create a change in the traffic so that he didn't have to, like, you know, deal with the the – the traffic getting to the airport and I was sitting in the in the audience of that class listening to him and the initial thing the first thing that came to to me when he shared that story was I don't have the right to do that mm. and and I realized what a gigantic <laughs> um you know interesting story interesting point of view that was to believe that I didn't have the right to do that cuz cuz what is what is Dane really talking about when he's he's saying you know just use some magic to to be able to change that the magic of you is being, right? You, the being, are the magic. All of this doing that we do in this reality, the efforting and the forcing and the, you know, uh, trying to make things happen the way we want us to, the way we want them to, to specific results, that's not the magic. The magic mm. is in being. And so when I sat there and, and when he told me that story, when he told us that story and I thought, oh, I don't have the right to do that, what I was doing was negating and invalidating the magic of me and like literally saying, oh, no, that's out of reach. I can't. I can't do that. I can't be that. And how often do we do that just throughout any given day where we have these fleeting thoughts of like, oh, no, I can't park there. Oh, no, I can't have that for lunch. Oh, no, I couldn't ever do that. Oh, no, I couldn't. It's just so it's so fleeting and it's so insidious that we do it all the time. We've placed all these things out of reach rather than asking a question. Yeah, and I, th I think, yeah, so often we are raised to um... – it's so what immediately springs to mind for me is is how the uh how the law is structured in so many different countries in in england i don't, you know you can do anything you want until it's a, until they make a law that says you can't whereas in a lot of countries in europe you can't do anything unless the law tells you that you can <laughs> do you see that so there's a very different way they write their laws there and i think that often goes with society is wow yeah i know and it's like Everything is illegal unless you're told by the government <laughs> yeah. that you can just, legally do it. <laughs> just assume that you can't unless we say it's okay. Mm. <laughs> wow. And, and I think that's why in this country, um, 
I, I'm not sure how it kind of functions in America, but it's like people just do all sorts of things. And then people in this country are kind of sick, get the going, oh, well, yeah, how, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. So let's make a law and stop them. And uh, rather than looking at it and, and saying, actually, what is this actually creating? And, and how much am I allowing this to affect me? And, 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 and all of that kind of stuff, is, as you said, you know, it, it is insidious where we walk around and all the time we're, we're thinking, what is it I'm not allowed to do? What is it I'm not? And we're waiting for people to tell us the things that we can do. We're waiting for permission to be granted, permission to get down from the table when you finished eating your meal, permission to put the TV on or go and play a game or, you know, all of that stuff. We have to, we've, we've been taught we have to ask permission before we're allowed to choose it. Yeah, and I, and I just... Uh, and in one what that, it takes to change that and to choose what feels fun for us and what will be expansive and what we actually really desire in life without having to wait for somebody to say to us, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. I had a woman in a foundation class recently who I think it was, it was foundation level and I think it was like day three. And every day I kind of just start with a check in, see how, how things are going. And, and she said, she said, you know, the thing I'm noticing the most this morning is relief. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Say more about that. And and it was a little bit of what you're talking about. Like she had been holding herself sort of in contraction, in constriction, obstructing possibility, obstructing choice. And, and of course, we're the only ones who can do that. So she was having the awareness that she was doing that. And she said, basically sitting here in this class talking about, you know, um, an infinite being's guide to functioning beyond this reality, she's realizing everywhere he, she was holding herself within the limitations of this reality, and she was feeling the relief of being able to stop now. I'm, it was like, kind of like giving herself permission to be that magic, you know, stop, stop keeping that somewhere out of reach. Stop with the I can't, and instead realize um, not only can I, but I will. <laughs> Yeah. I, I think yeah, I can't, I think is one of the biggest lies we've ever, ever bought into. Yes. yes. I can't. It's like, it's, yeah, it's, it, 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 it pervades through everything, you know, and it's, it's, it's just not real. You know, it, it, you can, you can do anything you want. You can choose anything you want. It may, you may not have to choose it the way you think you you've been told you should choose it or how it can only happen that way. It's like people, you can't have, you know, you cannot have a million pounds unless you dot, 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 dot. Um, and that's just absolute nonsense. And so people go through the life thinking that they can't have, as you said, you know, kind of more money than I could. Was it? Oh, I can't remember how more, to have more, it. More than, more than you could ever spend, uh, uh, more than enough. And wait, how do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> More than, More than I could ever spend, spend and never enough. Isn't never that right? enough. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who does oh, that belong to? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so, yeah, fuck that. That's pop, pop that. Give it all back. <sighs> Have it back, baby. Right back to the beginning. So, and um, yeah, there are all those things where, you know, so many, for me, one of the, it's like that relief of, of knowing that you can choose whatever you'd like to choose. And you don't have to justify or apologize for it. No. Yeah, as a matter of fact, what if you didn't have to provide uh, a valid, acceptable reason and justification ever again for anything you wanted to choose? Simply mm, because yes. <laughs> I have such resistance that I know, because I'm not, I know I've learned that, because it's like you have to justify every decision you make. Because like, if you go, if anyone tells you off and you go to court, they'll say to you, "Why did you do that?" And then you, it's like my mother used to say to her, "Why did you do that?" And we would have to give my mother a reason. She hit us anyway, but you know, it's like it doesn't matter what reason you gave, you still get a slap. But yeah, it was it, yeah that need to give a reason. Oh, yeah. Just, mm. And and Gary talked about that in one class I took somewhere once upon a time he said that's one of the things that keeps us most most tethered to this reality this reality is the lie that we we are required or must or need or should provide a valid or acceptable reason and justification for anything we choose mm -hmm. we just choose because we can yeah absolutely and what would it take to to change that because i i yeah so we can we can play with that um I think we're coming up to another break. So, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll play with that after the break and then just talk about how, what else we can do. What else is possible is desire. Because mm -hmm. I think, yeah, because that's, for me, is like there's, there can be so much misidentification over what desire 
really, really mean. So, um, yeah, let's, Carol, push that button, baby, and we'll be back after these adverts. Were you told as a child to grow up, act your age, and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you are an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choice and possibilities are always available to you? Tune in to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on a to zenfm What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, U.K. 033-0001-0625, or Skype us at a to zen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello and welcome back to the Playground of Possibilities where myself, Alan Jones and Tamara Yunker are playing with possibilities around desire. So, Tamara, what do you desire? Everything. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Someone someone in the chat room had said, you know, she grew up with too much of anything is a bad thing. And the one I got a lot was everything in moderation, everything in moderation. Mm. And and so, again, it's sort of like that's what I was talking about before when we, we, we determined that there are certain needs. You know, I need X amount of dollars to pay my mortgage. I need X amount of dollars to go to that next access class. I need X amount of dollars for whatever. Or... Whatever, whatever needs, you know, everybody's different, right? So you have your own kind of sense of needs. And if, if everything's supposed to be in moderation, like I said, that's what I grew up with, then I can't have a desire for greater than that. Moderation is what's right, what's acceptable, what's appropriate. And so I can, I can, you know, need up to that limit or I can, you know, want to have up to that limit. But anything more is, is no, mm -mm, that's off limits. And again, we don't allow our desire for to exceed our need of. That's so true. And, you know, it was really funny talking of that, you know, you can have too much of a good thing and too much is a bad thing and blah, blah, blah. I was in the uh, in the post office a couple of months ago and somebody had won the Euro, Euro, mil uh, the, um, Euro Millions kind of lotto. And it was, I think the jackpot prize was something like 75 million euros. This person won. One person won 75 million euros. And I'm, I was so stoked for this person having won it. And the yeah. woman in the post office goes, nobody should have that amount of money. It's disgusting. And she was really angry. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> she was like really resentful. I'm thinking, fuck, if, if 73 million, imagine the change in the world you could do with that. Imagine well, and, and, what if, yeah. and, mm. and what if you didn't even have, imagine what you could do in the world with it. What if you could just say, I want to have that much because I like it. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I really want. That's what I really wanted to say. But I'm deep, even now, I'm still monitoring that. It's like that would just be fun because you know, rather than just putting those dollars around my face, I would just 
roll around the whole bedroom in dollars, you know, because of my Facebook yeah. picture I've got. And, yeah. Mm. And, that's the, and there's another example of someone who's clearly put that out of reach, right? $75 million is, is, is excess. It's excess. Mm. Well, you, that's far more than you need. So then it becomes excess. And when did we make excess wrong? How much do you desire yeah. and how much have you suppressed or not you, but, you know, those listening, how much yeah. have we yeah. repressed and suppressed our desires because it has been deemed excessive? And and again, back to the allowed, we're like we weren't allowed, we weren't permitted anything excessive. Well, if you needed that, then it's OK. You know, you need some new shoes, we'll get some. But if mm. you just want some new shoes, can you and have that? It, it, you know, it's like and linked to that as well is how many of our desires have we hidden so deeply that we're not even sure now what it is that we desire? Oh, I'd say pretty much all of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, so people get, can get so confused when they're going, I, do you know, I have no idea what I actually desire as my yeah. life or in my life. Yeah. And, you know, my answer to that is, well, just go and play. Just yeah. go and play with things and just keep doing it as long as it's fun. If it's not fun, then choose something else. And that's yeah. the way to find out what it is. Because you start to unlock it. Go and get your bars run. That'll unlock it for you. <laughs> sure, mm. sure. And, and you know, children, if you look, I love to use children as an example, because they have completely unleashed, they have unleashed desire, right? They're just going to, they see a bright, shiny object, they're going to run over there and check it out. Well, what is that? You know, they, they want, they're in the store with mom or dad, and they're just be like, can I get this? Can I get that? Like, their desire is completely mm. unleashed. They're just moving toward everything that they desire. Their their whole orientation as life is toward, toward, toward. It's creation, right? You move toward what you want to create um, or what you desire. It's, to me, those energies are are synonymous. You know, the, the creative gender energy and the energy of desire, to me, are the same energy in a lot of ways. And when we shift that and start living in avoidance, and, and part of what creates this, you know, everything that's out of reach is what your parents, your caretakers, your people said, you know, how many times do they say, no, I want this, or, or you're moving towards something that is interesting to you, and somebody comes along and says, well, I mean, even, even as a, um, I was listening to a uh, someone the other day talking about their son is in college and he was so frustrated because his son wasn't landing on a particular, you know, like major to like, he doesn't know what he wants to do with the rest of his life. I mean, the kid is 19 years old and the father was ex expecting him to know what he wants to do for the rest of his life at 19. Mm -hmm. And was, and, and the son said, well, you know, I, I actually maybe acting, maybe acting would be fun. I think I want to go into that. And the dad dismissed it immediately and was, did not want to support him financially or or in any other way because he'd already dismissed it. like you can't have that so the dad was putting that out of reach for his son how mm. many people how many times do we put things out of reach in our life because somebody comes along and says says no or you says to your desire says you can't have it like we're un our desire is unleashed until we lock it down yeah absolutely because i was going to you know and it is just amazing how we we buy into those those concepts from our parents i remember as a child asking my mother for things because i had the absolute awareness and knowing that it could be easily created until my mother used to say oh you know you you, you don't live in the real world you think that you know, kind of money grows on trees and and so all of her limitations just you know that's not the way it works this is you know i'm older and i'm wiser and i'm telling you how it is so not only did I make myself wrong for having the desire to do whatever it was, I also kind of started to buy into her belief that actually it wasn't that easy. Whereas the underlying knowing I had was that actually there's nothing I can't have. There is absolutely nothing I cannot have. And, I, you know, the whole, th and I'm kind of jumping around a bit, something else is in my head, but I've, I've got to get it out while it's in my head i remember gary saying something on a call recently which is the minute you decide you need something you make it immediately impossible to have yeah because that that energy of need is is uh in contradiction to the energy of receiving yeah so if playing. you need it mm. if you need it you now have to go out and do something to get it so yeah. so you taking action and you're like you're out in the energy is is like there's a pushing grasp you know like that kind of energy as opposed yeah. to being open to receive something i now have to do 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 to get 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 yeah absolutely you know we 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 do think we have to do we do become do do heads and you know we, feel, <laughs> we do and our heads get full of do do because we bought into all of this 
lies and limitation about what's actually real, what's actually possible, and and how how it should show up and when it should show up and yeah, because that's the thing. Mm. I think it, that's, a, that's a big one right there. When it should show up, right? Because um, if if we have a mental idea of when something should show up, then we've just slid into expectation, and that is a slippery slope. And if it doesn't show up in exactly the way and the when we think it should, then that is one of the ways we can, again, continue to invalidate and negate the magic of us. An infinite being never rushes and never waits. No, and, and I'm, I've got a prime example of that was three years ago hearing you on the Pooja Network, loving your radio show every Wednesday. It was Wednesdays, wasn't it? It yeah. was, yes. And and saying, you know, what would it take one day to meet this person and, and play with this person? And here I am. Three years later, not only am I meeting you, I'm actually doing a radio show with you. <laughs> exactly. And, you I... know, th- <laughs> I would never would have guessed three years ago that I would even be doing a radio show with you. Let, you know, meeting you, let alone actually having regular... Se- with, yeah, no. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that class I was telling you about, um, the two and three, where yeah. I saw Dane doing his thing, and I was like, what is that energy? That energy, I want that. I want, I want to have more of that in my life. It took a couple of years for that to show up and, and materialize in my, actualize in my life as well. When I place my order with the universe, when I make my request, I have no time limits on that. It's only mm-hmm. my mind that's going to create a construct around time. Time is not real. So if I'm willing to receive everything and just enjoy the ride, then there is such thing as, you know, when, when's it going to get here? It's not showing up fast enough and I haven't had it yet because then you're results oriented and you're back in the trap of the limitations of this reality. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, it's interesting, and all of that stuff around, the, you know, the waiting for something to show up that you've asked for, what the awareness I get for a lot of people when they do that is, but if I ask for it and it doesn't show up, when I, when I, so I go and do something else while I'm waiting for it to show up, what if I get so busy doing something else that I miss it when it arrives, or um, I don't actually want it in the end, you know what I mean? It's like we get ourselves so caught up in, well, I've, I've asked for it, therefore I need to wait for what I've asked for before I allow myself to ask for anything else to make sure that I really want it and that it's what, and all of that stuff. Well, that's definitely a very linear way to operate and definitely should should keep doing that. <laughs> and that's it. It's linear. That's it. You've just nailed it. It's linear, isn't it? We yeah. create from linear. Mm. Yeah, until we don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm finally getting that. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to the universe, okay, so what can I create today that will be fun, phenomenal, and make me money? And so it's like make a cup of coffee. And I'm I'm doing that now. I'm just following that kind of energy of, okay, I'm just going to go and do that because I have no idea how that's going to show up for me, but I know that it will make me money. Yeah, and you never, you just never know what you're going to have placed out of reach. I would, can, can you know, so I feel a process coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> what have you made so vital about about possessing your desire as eternally out of reach that it now, never allows you to enjoy the moment and what you're creating now? And everything that is. That's the Time story to get to <laughs> <laughs> Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Do you want to do that again? If I can remember what I just said, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really should have written that down. I should have done a Dane and typed it, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> what have you made so vital about uh, possessing uh, your desires as eternally out of reach that it never allows you to enjoy uh, the present moment and what you're creating now? Yes, and everything that is, let's destroy and uncreate at all times a godzillion. Right, wrong, good, and bad, pot and pock, all in. Boys and beyond. <laughs> Fantastic. That's awesome. And I you know, that's one I'm gonna re listen to the uh the replay and I'm gonna stick that one on a loop for about six million days. <laughs> because... what, what, what I what I was thinking about was a woman who um again, because I have all these examples from my classes, I talk about the delight for me, living is delightful. It it didn't used to be. I've shared uh on many occasions how I used to be the walking talking Eeyore. And that has shifted. And now my life is literally delightful in every moment. And if something arises that it interferes with that, then I look at what is, what's possible to create a different choice. Mm. And, and the woman, as I'm facilitating class and I started talking about delightful, she realized she had this reaction and she had put that, like to delight was actually out of reach for her. 
you just never know. Yeah, that's really, I'm going to have to ponder that when we go into the break. You know, where have I put delight out of my reach? And, and, it's, that's, and you're not supposed to have delight all the time and all of that. So, yeah, we'll, um, let's head to break for the final time today. And then we'll come back after these ads and finish off with delight. So hit the button, Carol, please. Were you told as a child to grow up, act your age, and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you are an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choice and possibilities are always available to you? Tune in to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on A to Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The bars is the first class in access consciousness, a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bars session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a boys class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, U.K. 033-0001-0625, or Skype us at a to zen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello and welcome back to the Playground of Possibilities with myself, Alan Jones, and Tamara Yonker. And actually, something I should have said right at the very beginning of the show, and I'm so sorry I haven't. This is a pre-record. So, if you're listening to this, <laughs> if you're listening to this later, we ain't hearing you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I love anyway. it. <laughs> pre-record, people. We're energetically. <laughs> We're picking up on your questions energetically. I'm yes, so yes, awful. we are. <laughs> so, and actually, something else I wanted to do as well before we we finish off with the rest of the show is Tamara. If people want to get hold of you to help them work out what they desire as their life, how can they do that? Uh, yeah, desire-based living. One of my the things that's most fun for me to play with. What would it take for everyone to live desire-based living? Um, the best way is just go on the Access Consciousness website. I have a facilitators page there, and my contact information is there. Easy peasy. Okay, and the same for me. I'm there. You can find me there as well, uh, and you can find us on the um, on our Facebook page, Life with Play, which is uh, yeah. the background of possibilities. So you can get us there as well, and you can find us on Twitter. And yeah, we're all over the place. We are the sluts of the playground. <laughs> That sounds, I just should and delighted to be so. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I desire. Like, I like that, Alan. Let's remember that for 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 future shows. Sluts of the playground. Sluts mm -hmm. of the playground. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Sluts of the playground. <laughs> so, <laughs> new show. How to be a real slut. So I desire to be a slut of the playground. So I think that's it. You know, that delight, delight for me was something that was supposed to be so extraordinary that you mm. could feel it. Mm. Desires are supposed to be those things that are so almost unachievable that you don't have that many of them. Because if you have too many, then they're not really desires. They're, they're, you'll get bored with having desire. Well, here's, here's something, too, that I think um, shuts people's desire down is that if you attach it, 
to an object. In other words, if you make it about the the outcome or the result is the is the important significant piece rather than the energy of desire itself. Remember when I said a little while ago in the show that to me that energy of desire and that generative creative energy is is pretty much the same thing in a lot of ways. You see the little kids just running on fully unleashed desire. If you make that desire attack, like if you attach it to something, you know, ooh, that guy becomes the object of my desire, or that job becomes the object of my desire, or um, the thing that I've decided I have to have becomes the object of my desire, then as soon as you get, you know, quote unquote, disappointed once or twice because you didn't get the object of your desire, then you're like, well, it's better to desire nothing at all. Like mm. it's the, the pain of like not having the object of my desire is so unpleasant that I'd rather just desire nothing. You know, I see a, I see a lot of people living that way, and yeah. and it negates that that what if just living in and as that energy of desire is so juicy, delicious, and it never has to be attached to anything. You can it's like targets, right? In in, in access, we talk about targets. You can have targets for your desire all day long and never get that mixed up into I didn't get the object of my desire and I'm a failure or now I have to be disappointed. Yeah, and you know the other the other piece of that, Tamara, is how many times have we asked for the things that we desire but we had expectations about what it would be like when we got it. So when it did show up and you get that guy, he's like you have nothing in common and he's boring yeah. as shit. Right? And you're like, Oh my God like so yeah, so there was a guy at the gym who was just for me just beautiful. He had a really nice body, not like overly buff or anything like that. But for me, it was a really attractive body, and I thought, yeah, do you know, I'd quite happily jump into bed with him. And then for me, I, I heard him open his mouth and heard his accent, and it's like, oh my god, my dreams were just shattered because oh, the voice that would go with that body wouldn't be what it was. And I know that's all sorts of judgment. I'm not going to make myself wrong for that, but it was just so funny at the time hearing him speak, going, oh shit, you've just ruined my fantasy. To see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like how often do we make our desires this kind of fantasy of what we've decided it must be like in order for us to desire it rather than as you say the energy of desire of, which is yeah. so juicy of I'm getting to create this and I'm asking for it and I know somehow it's going to show up for me and while that's happening I'm going to be choosing this and if that thing shows up differently or not at all or at a really late date or a time when I actually am not choosing it anymore. Do you know what? That's okay. Yeah. Yep. It's a whole, that's, that's a radically different reality. Who's ready for some RDR, some radically different yeah. reality? Function <laughs> the way you just described is, is yeah. I'm not, the, the, the when and the how is not relevant to me. I simply know that it will. Thank you, universe. Yeah, that's it. Let go of the when and the how. So, what energy, space, and consciousness could we be not to function? To what? So, what, no, no, no. How do we, how do we word that? Uh, what have you vital have you made so vital about never possessing the <laughs> generative creative desire of the magic of you? Mm. <clears throat> and everything that brings up, let's destroy and uncreate that times a gazillion. Right, wrong, good, and bad, pod and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. That's really the willingness to perceive, know, be, and receive the gift of you. Yeah, so let's, let's step into that. So let's make the demand of ourselves to step into that energy of, you know, being everything that we truly be and just having a whole heap of fun, just desiring and creating from desire deliciously with total ease. Yeah, hedonism of the max, to the max. Absolutely, most definitely, and and voluptuousness. Because I want to talk to you about voluptuousness from from a meeting I had yesterday. But yeah, let's have voluptuous living. Yes, oh yes, happy. Thank you more, please. <laughs> the, to be a slut. Of Uh oh. Oh, I'm back again. Sorry, quick. <laughs> I'm back to say goodbye. We have 15 seconds to say goodbye. We'll see you all next week on the playground of possibilities. See you next week. Thanks, everyone. Week. Bye. Thank you for choosing to listen to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones. We hope you enjoyed playing with us today and that you'll come back with us next Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on A to Zen.fm. Until then, 
what would it take for you to enjoy playing with choices and possibilities to create more fun, more magic, and more of everything you desire? What will you choose today?